Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this here crazy house. With me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Okay, family. This is giving you a clear and concise indication of why all of our African American, all of our um. Ados. Ados. American descendants of slavery. This is how they all lose their wealth. All you got to do is look at this example case of Wendy Williams. Now, this is a sheer travesty. The fact that the lawyer, I mean, the the guardian is being sued by a former client. And according to the U.S. Sun, Morrissey and 10 other attorneys from her law firm were accused in the suit of conspiring to perpetuate a baseless guardianship against an individual, Jose Verdugo, in New York, who had won a $5.5 million personal injury claim. Michael Flermont of the Floor Hath Law Firm represented Verdugo after he sustained injuries from a construction fall, okay? In 2009, Herbert Rodriguez at Swartz Goldstone, um, Capsi Cates, LLC, reached out to um, Verdugo claiming that his case could not be finalized unless Verdugo consented to a MHL Article 81 guardianship that Vertigo did not want or need. Rodriguez was a former associate of Florham Hearts and was working with Morrissey and her firm to allegedly reap Morrissey and Morrissey substantial court awarded fees as guardian counsel through litigation, maligning floor half legally and ethically. Now, y'all hear this. Verdugo was placed under a forced guardianship with Morrissey as his guardian on January 19, 2020, until October 7, 2015. During this time, the lawsuit claims that Verdugo's money was used to pay for various lawsuits brought against Flormhath. As of the time of this writing, Verdugo was seeking $30 million in punitive damages from Morrissey and her firm. In the wake of revealing her diagnosis, Wendy Williams thanked her fans in a statement. Um, and that's good and fine, okay? What we want to talk about is this damn guardian and how they steal black folks' money, how all most of our stars die broke and their agents and their guardianships, people take advantage of the situation to come in and steal the money, set up their kids in colleges and a set up all kinds of business unbeknownst to the person whose money that they're stealing. Yeah, they even did it to Stevie Wonder. Okay? And you want to know why stars die broke? Huh? And this is a perfect case of why I said we have to have our reparations. But we it's this there's no way around it. Because too much wealth has been stolen by these people too much of our inheritance have been stolen from these people and they got all kinds of loopholes and all kinds of communication gaffes that allow them to run through your money appoint a damn guardian for you whether your family wants it or not 
This is all white people's madness. I'm just going to call it like it is. This is unreal, unfair. This is diabolical. This is Wall Street. This is Black Wall Street. This is what this is. You go through, you steal the person's wealth, you you do whatever you want, and then you got all this legal jargon to back you up when in essence you're just a thief. You're just thieves and bandits. Acting as temporary guardian for when for Williams, Morrissey filed a lawsuit against A and E Networks um, on Fe- uh, February twenty second. In it, she sued for injunction, relief, and temporary restraining orders. Both measures can be used to keep a party from doing a certain action. The action in question was Lifetime's documentary. Documentary. I'm sorry. Too damn late. Because we already got it. We already understand. And most of us have seen this happen to more than one of our stars at the hands of white managers, uh, white agents, uh, white people that are supposed to be looking out for their best interests when in essence all they're doing is lining their pockets with these people's money. Um, this documentary, a lot of people think it shouldn't have been done and she wouldn't have gave her approval. Well, I can tell you one thing. Um, this had to have come, this had to come out. It had to. It had to come out the way they doing her. I will smoke when I smoke, and I will liquor when I liquor. Wendy, would you want to go to the Oscars? What's Oscars? In the documentary, it was revealed that she has dementia. So I think they said it was alcohol-induced dementia. What did you see while you were shooting? It was a complex and sensitive journey, because we did not know when we started that she had dementia. And we were deeply concerned as we filmed. I wear makeup. Look, even when I do this, do you see a fly gap? It was illuminating watching this and that you say, well, what in the hell is going on with guardianship? That's the thing that's interesting to us is that a legal guardianship is in place, but there didn't seem to be a lot of guardianing. And so this is the reality of a time span. Did you want to wear your Chanel sweater or are you talking about your Chanel jewelry? Please, go away. And we know it's not easy for a lot of people to watch, but once we were in it, we felt like we were more scared about what would happen if we stopped filming than if we continued. <laughs> can, you, can you please come? Oh, please. And at the end, the Guardian did arrange to take her to a facility to get help. Just one day before Lifetime premiered Where's Wendy Williams, the talk show host's <laughs> care team released a statement on her behalf, thanking fans for their overwhelming support. Wendy's been in a wellness facility that specializes in cognitive issues since last April. With the spotlight on the star's health, the question is, were there warning signs? Do you want to stop drinking? No. When you watched the documentary, did you notice that you could see her declining and the dementia setting in? You see that she's getting um, more frail. She's not making as much sense. I haven't treated her, of course, but what I would say is that some of the things that she did probably killed off a lot of nerve cells ahead of time. Why don't we order in some liquor? No. We haven't been able to speak to her in, gosh, over six months now since we stopped filming with her, but the family has been speaking to her more regularly, and they've shared that she does sound better. She's excited about her future. Um, You know, she talks about the possibility of getting back to work. But like I always remind her, first and foremost is your health. That's a snippet. And I hope the good white people that's in her camp, the ones that actually are human and that are not there to take advantage of her and steal her money, I hope they step forward and help prosecute their peers 
for having a history of doing this to black artists. Because this or 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 any fair minded the judge let me go back here the judge from what I understand what's the judge the guardianship judge Lisa Sokoloff who has been um, the one that went, returned Wendy back from Miami to New York I heard that she's granting people all guardianships, ones who donated allegedly money to her campaign. Okay? And that she was paid five thousand dollars something and or or you know, added to her campaign from these uh uh lawyers guardian that Wendy Williams have, allegedly. This is a severe problem. And it's, it's really getting old. And we need to wake up. Y'all running around here um, thinking it's all gravy. No, it's not. At the drop of a hat, your reality can change. And with that being said, I'm going to see you in the next video.